Hello and welcome back to the Groundbreaker International YouTube channel. It is good to be back with you here once again as always. On this video today we are going to take a deep dive into the word evil in Hebrew and I'm going to unpack some things that maybe you've never heard before. It's going to be a super interesting in-depth study on good versus evil. If at any point in time you feel led to sow into this ministry or to get more information about Groundbreaker International, please visit our website at www.gbreaker.org. Let's get right into the teaching today. I would like for you to go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. And here's the first time that we see the word evil in scripture. Now there is a Hebrew tradition called the law of first mentions. And what that means is the first time that something is mentioned in Scripture is significant. So I believe today that we can find the greatest significance about the understanding between good and evil right here in the Law of First Mentions. So let's read this today. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want you to underline that word knowledge there in the Bible. That word is the word dayoth in Hebrew. And just to give you a quick synopsis of the word dayoth, it means cunningness, to have an understanding of, to have a deep-rooted understanding. It actually begins with the letter dalit, and then it ends with the letter tav. Now, Dalit is a door. Tav is the fullness. It's actually the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's as if you're walking in through the door to understand the fullness of something. Now, the letter in between there is the letter that we're going to get into here in just a moment. It's the letter Ayin. And it has, the, let me just say this for right now, it has to do with wisdom and understanding. And so this word knowledge of literally means walking through the veil to gain understanding and wisdom about the fullness, the fullest of the fullness of something. That's really interesting because God plants a tree in the middle of the Garden of Eden, a tree that gives you the full knowledge, the full view and understanding between these two words, good and evil. Now the word good here is the word tav in Hebrew, and it means that, something good or pleasant. The Bible says that everything that God created was good. Why is that? Because God is good. Everything that God does is good. There's no evil. There's nothing uh, negative found in Him. Everything is right and just. So now let's look at the word evil in Hebrew here, and this is going to be the word ra. Ra is made up of the letters resh and ayin, and the root is a verb with two ayins in it, and it means to do evil. So uh, the, the, the word ra or evil here is an absolute state masculine noun with one ion, but then the word ra to do evil has two ions in it, all right? Now, let's break down this word resh, ion, evil, and see pictorially what it means in Scripture. I think this is going to help you out a lot to get a great understanding of what this actually means. Resh, let's begin there. The letter resh means to be aware. Now, the original pictograph of the resh was the back of the head. It's a picture of the back of someone's head, and it literally means the head, the first or the chiefest of things. Now, you may have heard the term before Rosh Hashanah. The word Rosh is the head. That's the word for head. And that word Rosh Hashanah means the first of the year or the head of the year. So Rosh has everything to do with being aware. It has everything to do with knowledge or the mind, the brain, and the first of things. What's the first thing on our bodies? It's our heads, right? It's the thing. That's the thing on top that controls everything else in our bodies. It's our brains. God designed us to be that way. So your head is very interesting because it gives you awareness. 
The Resh is all about adaptability and awareness, to be aware of your surroundings. Because we have the ability to turn our heads where our eyes are connected to our heads, we have the ability to be aware of our surroundings. And thus, when we are aware rather of our surroundings, we can adapt to our surroundings. All right, so for instance, if I walked out of the door today and I saw that there was a fire around me, that the building was on fire, guess what? I'm going to be able to look around and I'm going to be able to adapt to that situation because of the awareness, because of my head. My Rosh is on top of my head and my ions are seeing, my ion is able to see and perceive and understand, wow, I'm in danger. I need to find the exit. Look, there's the exit, let me go toward the exit. And so all of that has to do with the race. It's about adapting to your circumstances. If you, if you ever have ever heard of the phrase, keep your head on a swivel, your head is literally on a swivel. It's the ability to be aware of your surroundings. And that, that phrase, to, be, uh, to keep your head on a swivel means stay aware, stay cautious, don't lose sight, don't get distracted. Always, you know, keep your focus around you, all right? So the resh um, also means poverty. It also can mean a, a picture of a man that's bent over because the resh is bent over humbly, much like the letter dalit in Hebrew is bent over. But the resh actually means absolute destitute, absolutely having nothing at all. Dalit is not to the fullness of the resh in being destitute or poor. It's similar to the Dalit in many ways, but the Dalit uh, is destitute with hope, whereas the resh, on the other hand, is uh, just beyond destitute, absolute, absolute nothingness. And so I would liken it to this. The Dalit is broke, but the resh is just dirt poor. You know, I have a friend in Missouri uh, that is a business. He's a wealthy entrepreneur, and he always has taught me this. He said, he said, poverty is a mindset, but being broke is a temporary condition. And so that's the way that I would liken the race to the Dalit, is the Dalit is a temporary condition, whereas the race is absolute a poverty mindset. It's absolute nothingness. You may be saying to yourself, what does that have to do with evil? Well, I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm building the case here today. All right, so uh, the Resh differs from the Dalit, as you can see here, in that the Dalit has a Yud coming out between the two lines, which make it up, and the Resh lacks this Yod. All right, now the Yod represents creation, and that the Yod is said to be the spark of everything that God created. It, the word Yod actually means hand. It's a picture of a hand, but it's said to be the spark of the Spirit in everything because there is a Yod contained in every other letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Yod is a mere dot, a mere spark, but he creates big things. And so the Yod is very important. And here in this word, the Yod, or in this letter rather, uh, the Dalit has a Yod in the back of the head where the Resh lacks even the Dalit. And here's what that means. God created this present world that we live in, the heavens and the earth. He created two habitations, it says in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, Barashit, Elohim created bara, the heavens, Shemaim, and Eretz, the earth. So he created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says, two habitations. So in this present world that we live in right now, there is currently a heaven and an earth. There is the heavens that we know of today, the third heaven, and then there's the earth that we live in presently. And he created also the world that is to come after the judgment. Now, this is going to be the new heavens and the new earth that it talks about in the book of Revelation, that this heaven and the current earth are going to pass away, and then the new heavens and the new earth are going to invade after the judgment. So when you see the Yod in the mind of the Dalit here, 
This is said to represent the one who has eternity or the world to come in mind. They have the coming judgment in mind, so they live according to the word of God. My friends, that is wisdom right there, to keep the world to come in mind. That's very important concerning the word evil here in the Dalit, because the Dalit even though they may be poor, even though they may be in need, they still have the world to come in mind. They still have an understanding of, I need to live for God. I'm not living for the now, but I'm working toward the future. And that's what this Dalit is. And that's the beginning of wisdom. It's the fear of God. And it's the understanding that we aren't living in this present world to be contained in this present world. We are living for eternity, my friends. Amen to that. Come on. So with the Resh, it lacks the thoughts of the world to come. It lacks that you're there, the understanding or the care that there is a world to come. They're, the Resh is living for the now. Hey, some of you might be getting this and picking this up already. So here in the word Ra, it begins with this letter Resh. There's a lack of a care of eternity. There's, there is no cares, there's no thought about your actions that pertain to eternity. So the Reish is said to be selfish in speech as the two lines here that connect it represent speech and intellect. Think about that for a moment. So the, the Reish there that it connects speech and intellect, which make up the understanding of the, the mind, the head, and what comes out of our head, which would be our pay, the letter pay, which is our mouths, it all connects there. This is the hub. This is the center of everything that you say and do. And your mind begins the thoughts, but eventually your mind sends signals to your mouth to speak those things out. And so uh, the race here, it lacks any care or understanding that there is a world to come. And so when people speak, they speak flippantly. People who live in a state of evil, they speak flippantly. They don't think about eternity or eternal things. They live in the now with any forethought of eternity. That's vitally important. So Raish is said to be selfish speech as the two lines that connect this represents speech and intellect. Now, one who does not keep their mind on the coming judgment does not fear God. Like I said, the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says this in Proverbs 8, 13, that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, to detest evil, to go against evil. And pride and, and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. That's the Lord speaks that and says, the perverse mouth, the evil thoughts going the ways of evil God detests. He hates. Thus, people who do not fear God do not have eternity in mind. See how all of that connects here. Now, here is where it gets really interesting. Let's move on to the next letter, the letter ion. Now, we're still talking about the word evil. This is the word ra. This is the same word that we saw in the book of Genesis where God says that in the middle of the garden, I will plant the tree of the knowledge, the deoth of good, tov, and evil, Ra. The knowledge, the understanding between good and pleasant and Ra, evil. Here's the letter Ion. The letter Ion is two eyes connected to the optic nerve sending signals to the brain. This is the original pictograph of the letter Ion. It's two eyes because we are made with two eyes and it's connected to the optic nerve that sends signals to the brain. This is incredible. These are the building blocks of the universe. This is exactly how God has created us in his image to have iron, to have not only eyes. What is the purpose of the eyes? It's to see, yes, but it's also to understand. Remember the illustration I gave you a few moments ago about if I walked out of this door and there was a fire on the other side, I would ingest, I would see it, but what good would seeing the fire do if I didn't understand that that fire meant danger? That fire means 
you better run, you better call the fire department, you better get out of the building right now. So it's not just to see, but ion is also about wisdom, about completeness, about full understanding. The knowledge of, remember, day off, the door to ion, the wisdom, the understanding of the fullness, the knowledge of the wisdom, wisdom and understanding of the fullness of your situation. My friends, that is exactly why Christ came to this earth to die for us, because we have the wisdom, we have the knowledge, the understanding of good and evil when Adam and Eve uh, partook in the sin, in the disobedience of God, their eyes, the Bible said, were open to them. Their, and we're going to talk about that right now. The eye is much more than just looking at something with physical eyes. It ha also has uh, something to do about the opening of the understanding of your spirit. This is what I really want to get you today. It has so much more to do with just the physical realm of the physical eyes, but they parallel your spiritual eyes. You and I, we have a spirit on the inside of us. This flesh is going to die. It's already dead. It's in the process of decay. But your spirit, man, is what lives in eternity on the other side. In the book of Genesis 2.9, uh, it says, And out of the garden the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, which is also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want you to go to Genesis 3, 4 through 7, and it says this, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Whoa, what just happened there? Satan, the serpent here, says, in the day that you eat of it, your spiritual eyes are going to be opened up. In other words, he knows, and Eve knows here, that their eyes are closed, that they don't see the other side. This is getting really deep here because if that is so, then Adam and Eve would be like children, not having the knowledge that there is a difference between good and evil. All they knew was good because everything that God created, the Bible said, was tough. It was good. So there was no negative. There was no evil. There was no absence of God in them. It was all pleasant. It was all perfect. But they don't know that there's another side. But what happens here is the serpent tells Eve, you and I know that there's more than just this tov. There's another side to this. There's another way to look at things. And God, he knows that if you touch that tree, that your eyes will be opened. And don't you want your eyes to be opened? Aren't you curious to see what would happen if you started participating in the other side of the supernatural realm? Paraphrasing here, this is basically what uh, the serpent is telling Eve. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant, it was good to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, wise iron. That's what the ion's all about. It's about wisdom. What is wisdom? It's understanding. How can you understand something if you don't know about something? And Eve had no clue what was on the other side of that. But it was the temptation. It was the thoughts that the serpent put in her mind that caused her to think twice, that caused her to drift outside of the will of God and toward the edge of evil, and then see what happens in verse number, uh, well, we'll continue on in verse number six. In a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She took of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate it, and the eyes of both of them were, oh, and then it says, she also gave to her husband, sorry, with her, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were opened, 
and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. In other words, they had no idea that there was another side. They had no idea that there was any negativity, any shame to be had. All they knew was good. But then when they disobey God and they touched that tree and they took of it and they ate of it, then their spiritual eyes, it was almost like a camera came on and they could see and they understood, oh my, there's something else. There's another side to this whole existence. What if today somebody came to you and said, listen, um, if you do this thing, I know you aren't supposed to do it, but if you do this thing, there's a whole other realm out there that you don't even know exists. You might have felt like you know that there's something that exists, but if you do this, your eyes will be open and you will see these other things. Well, friends, that's exactly the same tricks that Satan uses today to people. That's exactly why people get into new age. That's why they get into witchcraft. That's why they get into soothsaying and astral projection because their eyes will be opened. The enemy uses the same tactics and the same tricks today that he did at the beginning of time. And I'm telling you today, don't fall for the tricks. This is why God is bringing out all of this deep revelation today, because in the last days, the Bible says that evil is going to increase and that even the knowledge is going to increase. So we have to be prepared and equipped to understand what it is that we are fighting today today. This word for evil, I'm going to begin to put it together for you now. Ion is a choice we have between good and evil. It's literally a choice. Now, I want to tell you something. Muslims and Jewish mysticism teaches in a New Age version of something called the good eye and the evil eye. But there's actually some symbolic truth to this. They just take it off into... Uh, left field with things like luck and the power of suggestion and etc. things like that. There is some truth, though, in the symbolism of this. Just as the iron has two eyes, it is said that one represents seeing good and one represents seeing evil. We have a choice as to what side we are going to operate in. We have an understanding now that there is good and there is evil. But now we have to make the choice. We have been given a choice either to live for God, to live in His will, to live in the center of God's will, or to edge closer and closer to evil until we are completely pulled outside of the will of God. We are living in sin. We are living outside of, of the bounds of freedom that Christ came and died for us. And that's exactly what happens when we live in evil. When we put these two letters together for the word evil, we see what evil actually is. Here is the definition of it. Resh, awareness. Ion, to see and to understand and to obey. Evil is the awareness and understanding that there is an antithesis to good. And to do evil is not only knowing the difference, but to participate in the difference. Hence, the second ion, or what uh, some call the evil eye. Ion also means, like I said, to understand and to obey or to participate. My friends, everything outside of God is evil. Here's my belief, is that was evil created by God? No, God did not create moral evil. What happens is everything about God is good and perfect. Everything about Him, nothing you could change on God to make Him better. He is absolute perfection above all perfections. And in fact, that is the definition of the letter Tav. It's perfection above all perfections. The last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That is God. And that is what Christ came to do to die on the cross for us so that we could be made righteousness uh, through the blood of Jesus. We could be made righteous and whole in the sight of God who is all good. There's nothing negative. But outside of God, that is where evil exists. 
I've heard many accounts of people who have seen the hell or they've had visions or have been to hell and then have been able to come back to tell about it. And everyone will tell you the worst part about hell out of all the torments, out of all the evil that they feel, the worst part is the complete and total separation from God that you will never see your creator, that you will never be in the presence of God. Because my friends, that's exactly what Ra is, evil. It's the understanding and the wisdom that there is an outside, that there is something outside of God. It's nothingness. What Ra is, what evil is, is absolute destitution, absolute nothingness. We need to understand that today, that with Jesus Christ, there is always hope, but outside of him, without sight of him, there is no hope. There is nothing for us. This world is already passing away. It's already got the mark of judgment on it. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of timing. But what we have to do is we have to be focused on God's will in our lives, doing the will of God, repenting of our sins, turning away from the things of this world and turning back to God. And the only way to do that is through Yeshua, Jesus Christ today. He is the go-between. He is the only way to get to God and the only way to not live in evil any longer. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, they breached, they breached that covenant with God. They breached that, that place. And what happens is their eyes were open to the other side. They saw that there was another place that you could go, but it wasn't within God. It was outside of God. So that is what true evil is, and that is the true origin of evil, is I do believe uh, that evil has always existed because just as God has existed always, anything outside of him, anything out, off limits would have existed as well. But as long as you're abiding in him, as long as you're abiding in God, in the presence of God, and you are abiding in his will, then you are in the righteous arms of Jesus Christ, you are in a safe place, the only safe place there is from evil. And even though evil may penetrate this world and we see things getting worse and worse and people are getting more and more evil in the last days, we, we already know that from the scripture. What we have is we do have hope. Just as the Dalit has in the back of the Dalit's mind a poor person, but with the understanding that we have everything through Jesus Christ. We have hope in eternity, life and life abundantly through Him. So we're not rash. We aren't completely hopeless with no end in sight. Uh, rash is, is eternal. Rash is an understanding of, of eternal judgment. But Dalit is an understanding that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is the door. Because remember, Dalit is a door. Yeshua became the door to get to God so that we don't have to suffer eternal punishment outside of him. So today, I want you to look at James chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. And the Bible says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Every good thing is from above. It's from God and comes down from the Father of lights. That is our Creator, with whom there is no variation or no shadow of turning. Of His own will, He brought us forth by the word of truth. Who is the word of truth? Ye Yeshua, Jesus Christ. He is the word that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. To abide in God, my friends, is to remain in the good, whereas moving outside of him moves us further into the realm of evil. So that is the true definition today of evil is everything that's outside of God is evil. And so if you see a nation, think about this for a moment. If you see a nation that is becoming more and more godless, you will see evil increase. 
It's a fact. Because the further you get away from God, the more the evil increases. It's not God punishing you. No, in fact, God's judgment is the grace of God on you. It's the grace of God for your country because he's trying to draw you back to him. The only real safe place for your eternal soul is in him. That's it. There's no other way. And so everything outside of him, you're edging closer and closer. The further you get away from God, deeper into evil until you finally get sucked in to the point where it's very difficult to return. It's very difficult. There are many people that are so far outside of God that their minds have become reprobate. They have Their consciences are seared, and they are so far outside of God, so far away, that anything for them is possible. Anything that their heart desires, violence, terrible things, acts of violence and, and awful things, sexual, immoral things, sexually immoral things, all of that, no wonder that it seems like people, once they get further and further away from God, they get worse and worse and worse. And that's exactly why. The, and, but praise be to God, there is hope through Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that we have in Him today. And you can have that hope today. If you need Yeshua in your life, if you don't know Him, I want you to pray with me today and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me and rose again and I want to be in heaven with you, God. I want to be in your will, in your perfect will. And I want to live for you and let you be my master and my Lord. If you prayed that with me today, make sure you tell me in the comments because we want to hear any testimonies of salvation, any testimonies that you might have that this video has blessed you. If you feel led to give to Sow Into Groundbreaker International today, you can do so on our website at www.gbreaker.org. We also have a PayPal account right there on your screen. And there is a way that you can send both check, money, order, uh, things like that, communications through what we call snail mail to get to us in the mail. And uh, we pray over every seed that's sown into this ministry. I personally pray over every seed. I pray for you. I pray for your finances. I pray for your family. And I always pray a 100-fold fullness of return over every seed that's sown into Groundbreaker International. Also, make sure that you check out our website and become a ministry partner if you have not done so. And you will be kept up to date on what's going on in this ministry, any special teachings that we do, special YouTube videos. You'll be notified many times on there, even before YouTube notifies you. So make sure you sign up to become a Groundbreaker International partner with us today. And we would love for you to be on the team, the Groundbreaker International team. Also, we've got some resources out there for you on our website, on our shop page, and also on Amazon. If you love this Hebrew stuff, if you love the Hebrew alphabet, you love the Hebrew language, the original language that the Old Testament was written in, make sure you check out cyberhebrew.net. Now, this is a different website than our main website, but at cyberhebrew.net, we have an online course for you at $75 one-time fee, and you get this whole course, Cyber Hebrew. You'll learn not just every Hebrew letter, but also the numerical values, the ordinal values, gain a deep understanding of the Word of God like never before. You'll be able to, to break down words in Hebrew pictorially like we've done on this video today. So much more. Go to cyberhebrew.net and sign up today. Don't, don't wait around on this because you right now could be learning so much more about the Word of God. I'm telling you, whenever I started to learn all of this and my Hebrew mentor taught me uh, all of this stuff, it opened the Bible up to me like never before. So make sure you check out cyberhebrew.net. Also, if you like to read, we have a book called Mysteries of the Hebrew Alphabet, and it's available on our website or on amazon.com. You can check that out today and go purchase that book. We go through all 22 Hebrew letters and uh, just a great handy resource, very powerful resource that I want to put in your hands today. And I'm so thankful to you 
and to all of our ministry partners out there for making these videos possible. I pray that God has blessed you today through this teaching. If so, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much. Until next time, God bless you, God bless your family, and we will see you all again real, real soon. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that notification bell so you can receive updates for when new content arrives. Also be sure to visit our website at gbreaker.org. From there you can learn more about Groundbreaker International, and if the Lord leads you to do so, you can sow a financial seed of blessing. Now, I would like to invite you to check out one of these other videos from Groundbreaker International's YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless.